Walked out to a low tire on the E36 this morning. That's always no good. Thankfully, a little Amazon compressor coming in clutch. But uh, welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, today we're gonna be kind of twink twinking, tweaking on the BMW a little bit. So uh, one thing that you guys know, if you're you know if you've ever been an E36 owner, is these cars just have like a gnarly rake to them from factory and. Even with suspension, a lot of the issues or complaints with BMW suspension, these E36s, is that the rear always sits higher. And my car is no exception to that case. So the front, I do have a bit of a wheel gap here because I have to run it for my suspension clearance because I do have a CNC 71 angle kit. So if I go pretty much any lower, I just run into issues with contacting parts. Uh, mostly, I, th I think it was just the fenders because when you go full lock, the wheels lift a bit, if that makes sense, like it gets taller. Um, so that's gapped like that, but the rear is just really raked right now, and it's harder to tell on this surface I don't know you can kind of see it like that. Yeah, there you go Really raked. Uh, so really the only way you can go about that is I've got reaction coilovers on here Absolutely love them. They're fantastic. I got the preload all set up and everything it rides so good and it handles so good I just hate that uh, you know that rake so i'm gonna go ahead and do the unthinkable and uh, i'm sure a lot of you guys already did this but i'm gonna go ahead and chop a, a little bit out of the spring try and drop it out now i already have removed um the buckets so i do run the divorce setup still and on the front which is the spring perch i removed the adjustment cup to try and gain like an extra half inch or whatever but i still want to go just a little bit lower so we're going to come in here and we're going to chop out part of the coil spring and then reset the uh, preload on the shock and hopefully it still rides good. It's not a huge issue because I had the suspension completely dicked before and I still drove great with it. So um, not gonna be an issue for the driver. Just hopefully the you know overall handling characteristics aren't changed too much. But I also am gonna do some wheel studs because I hate these wheel bolts. And I, I did the front stud conversion forever ago when I did the coilovers because I had to run spacers on the wheels that I had at the time. Uh, otherwise they would hit the shock body so I did the conversion up there I just didn't have the rears because I got the fronts from a friend so I bought some rears go ahead pull the Datsun out because that's hopefully getting picked up today move the S2000 out of the way now that I got that finished up and um, yeah we'll get the rear studs done and we'll chop that spring long-winded explanation to say that we're doing janky drift car stuff today but we're gonna have some fun doing it hopefully um, I'm here by myself like always so that's not very fun but working on the drift car is always fun All right, BMW's, you know, wheels are off. Now let's start with the studs before I pull the springs out and chop them. Uh, these are the ones I got. Now these are the ECS tuning ones. I've heard mixed things on them. I run the garage stick up front, and personally, I'm going to swap to the garage stick later. But uh, I, with garage stick, they don't sell them in half sets. So I only need a 10. Garage stick only sells the full 20. I don't want to buy 20 right now. I just want a 10. So thankfully, ECS does sell these now. Uh, I am just going to find the Allen key really quick because they are Allen headed. Uh, it appears to be a five millimeter. Yeah, five mil. So uh, you need some blue Loctite. Get some blue Loctite. You better Loctite these things in because when you see guys with BMWs and their wheels fall off of the track, chances are if they didn't torque their studs down or their uh, wheel bolts down, if they're running studs, chances are they didn't blue Loctite and torque the studs. Now the torque spec on these things, I believe, is only about 25 foot pounds. It's not much, but that blue Loctite is going to be your lifesaver. I still don't understand why BMWs and Euro cars come with wheel bolts from the factory studs. And the fact that they'll sell you a thread in stud to more easily put your wheel on. But like if, especially on the SUVs, if you guys have ever worked on like the X90s or I don't know, whatever the big BMWs are, like those wheels are so crazy heavy. So the fact that they don't have wheel studs from factory is ridiculous. But that's it, uh, torque wrench is set to 25 foot pounds. So let's torque them down. All right, 
right, so I used to run these ECS 10 mil spacers up front before I got these style 42 BBS wheels uh, because the wheels I used to run up front did not clear the factory shock without uh, a spacer. So now that I don't need that up front, I do want to put it in the rear because although these are 17, 8 plus 20, that plus 20 is a little weak on stock body. So we can go ahead and now we can run a little bit of a spacer here in the rear and that's going to poke it out just a little bit more and it's going to look cool. And uh, yeah, you can see the spring bucket in here. So all I got to do to access uh, the spring is unbolt the shock body here and then the, it'll all sag and then I'll be able to get the uh, the spring out and then we can chop a little bit out of it. Alright, shock's loose, now we can lower this down. we go just this little guy so this is a 12k spring if you're wondering I run 10k front 12k rear so I'm thinking probably just chop the bottom part because you just I think I don't know I'm gonna put the cut part on the bottom of the bucket I'd rather damage the bucket which I doubt it will because it's thick you know stamped metal as compared to the chassis but I'm thinking we're just gonna cut probably part way up this coil. I'll, uh, I'll measure it and then, you know, make a mark and chop each one the same. In a measuring sense, that gives us basically an inch and an eighth. So that's not bad. And that should be, you know, plenty for me, I'm sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and just chop these uh, you can either use an angle grinder or I have a vertical band saw over here that's probably going to be a little bit easier to use, so I'll just use that. Both these guys are cut. Uh, let's just slap them on. Got the spring in over here. I just wanted to mention to you guys, if you don't already know, a big part of keeping your suspension like working good and feeling good is your preload. So for these cars, if I remember right, it's been a few months since I've set it, but uh, you want to do like five to 10 millimeter of compression on the spring. Now I did clock mine so I can see it through the ball joint area right here. Uh, the cut angle is facing the ball joint or in line with the ball joint. So I'm gonna match that to the other side again, like I mentioned before, so they try to stay even. Um, but I'm going to preload this, so it's basically just kind of barely floating there now. So I'm gonna just preload it, you know, probably like that much, like a few turns in my pole jack here, or like a pump or two of a floor jack. And then I'm just gonna loosen this locking collar and adjust this up to match that. All right, break the shock perch loose, spin that up. And then I did have this compressed, because I uh, should have, um, you know, I should have taken the collar off while it was still uh, bolted up. So now we just thread this up to where it pretty much just matches our uh, our preload. So I'm still gonna go a bit higher. Pretty much right there. Looks to be good. All right, so now we'll lock this collar down. Uh, I'm gonna obviously just mess with it. So I'm gonna do the other side really quick. We'll rest it on the ground and kind of see what the height's looking at. But realistically, that should be good. The spring is compressed, preload is set, and now it should stay like that and it should still ride uh, with the same r relative quality that I did before. We'll see. I don't know if I took out a little or if I took out a lot. I think, I think I got it just right for what I want, but the car I think is still riding 
No, I can still get the rack arm under it. That front one, the floor is unlevel, so that doesn't count. But no, honestly, I think that's good. Took out a decent bit of that wheel gap. Still just a little bit, but that's pretty much even with the front. Granted, the front is looking a little high right now because the suspension has to, you know, compress or whatever. But no, I'm pretty stoked on that. Thankfully, that's going to look good. We'll see what happens when it settles a little bit after driving. But the spacers definitely helped fill this out a little bit. Now, I do need to add a little bit of camber. I need to go get the alignment checked because I did notice even without the spacers or messing with this stuff, uh, the last few sets of tires I burned through, I was getting a little bit more outside outside edge wear. Um, so yeah, add a tiny bit of negative camber, but that's looking way better. Not bad. I mean, we're not stance boy fitment, but we're better than we were. So I'll take that as a win. I'm also still looking for a non M rear bumper if anybody local has one, so hit me up. BMW looks pretty good. I just spun around the block. Uh, the drivability seems the exact same. The only difference I've noticed is maybe I need to add a little bit more preload to keep the springs a little bit more taut, but when I'm pulling in and out of uh, the shop driveway, because it's a bit of a steep incline, um, you can hear the springs kind of shift in their perch a little bit. You'll get a little bit of a clunk. So I may just up the preload a little bit but normal driving, we'll see if it's an issue. I'm not driving the car home today. Uh, I'm gonna take the S2000 home today, but it should be fine. I mean, I got plenty of preload. I can go way up if I really want to, just, you know, obviously sacrificing ride quality. Um, but that's really all I can do. I mean, this was a short video. I just wanted to have some fun with it and uh, make the car look a little bit better, get a little bit uh, lower and get the wheel studs put on. So we got everything done. We came here to do. I'm gonna wrap this video up and thanks for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me on the channel. If you're new to the channel, hopefully you want to consider subscribing. And uh, if you're local, you want to get some fab work done or you got some parts need installed, um, you know, hit me up at Velocity Race Fab. And uh, hope to see you guys out at some future events. So do what you love with the rest, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.